Welcome to Dentamax. One of the most important tools your office can utilize is the patient recall system. We can take a look at that by going to our scheduler and we've got a new patient over here, Cindy Jones, who's coming in for a complete exam in FMX. And there's a note here, find out when her last hygiene visit was. Of course, because she's a new patient, we don't have any history to know when she's due for a next cleaning. Once you know that information, you can pull up her patient information screen and make note of that date right down here in the bottom left corner. Initially, for a new patient without any history in your office or an existing patient without any recall history in your office, you're going to want to set a manual recall date. It's easy to do just by checking this box and putting in the date that the patient says they're due for their next visit based on the information you've received from their insurance or their previous dentist. We'll go ahead and say that Cindy was due for her next recall visit a couple of months ago. By setting this date, the computer will now start tracking that Cindy needs a recall appointment and she'll populate on different recall reports. We'll go ahead and save our changes. The other option in the patient information screen in that recall section is the use recall function here. You'll want to set this after the patient's been in for their initial recall visit so you know the preferred frequency of their recall visit. Perhaps the hygienist recommended we see Eileen every five months for a recall visit. Once you've set the use recall function, you're going to save your changes. One of the easiest systems to use in Dentamax in regards to recall is the recall list. We'll go up to our list window and click on recall list. We want to go ahead and select our date range and the date range we pull up in here is going to give us people due between January 1st, 2013 and we'll say September 30th, 2014 that do not have a recall appointment scheduled. These people are being pulled from the data based on that bottom left corner box that we set either the manual recall date or the use recall function after their initial recall appointment. It's very easy to send these people a recall reminder that lets them know very nicely that they're due for a recall visit and to please give your office a call to get that scheduled. I can send all of these people a recall reminder at once by clicking send email reminders. If there's someone you would like to not include in this section, you simply do not click their name. Of course, keep in mind the only people that will actually get a recall reminder are the people with an email address in this section. From here, you would simply click send in the bottom right corner of your screen and the computer will send out a free email reminder to these four patients we've selected that they are due for a recall appointment and to please call your office to get that on the schedule. Zero of four email messages were sent out. You'll certainly have more success with this in your office as long as you're collecting email addresses. The other option of a free email reminder to send out is going to be used from our scheduler. If you right click anywhere on the scheduler, you have the option to send an email reminder. This reminder is different. The one we just looked at is for people due for recall that are unscheduled. This reminder is going to go out for the appointments that are already on your schedule just to remind them that they have an existing appointment. You can choose to send this for one appointment or for all appointments in this view, which would send to everybody on this screen. You would simply click all appointments in this view and once again you get a pop-up window in order to select who you want to send those email reminders to and you would click send in the bottom right corner of the screen. If you're curious what the message is that these folks are getting, you can go to file, program preferences, go over to your email settings tab and see the two versions of the different reminders. This first one is that they have an appointment and you're reminding them of the date and time. The second one is that they're in need of a recall appointment only. You can change the wording on these reminders and customize it to suit your practice needs by clicking where you'd like to add or change words and go ahead and type in what you'd like. The section over here to the right is merge fields. So for example, in the appointment reminder email, instead of saying sincerely your dentist, we could change that to say sincerely Alicia's family practice by double clicking on practice name. Now it'll import our practice name to this field on that email. At this point we'd click save changes when you're done editing the wording on those two different email reminder options. 
Once you've set each patient information with a time frame to start tracking their recall, we have other report options to help manage your recall. We'll go ahead and click on reports and you can see I've favorited my recall reports. The first option you see here is appointment reminder cards. And once again, these are for people with appointments for recall already scheduled. Of course, you'll want to have your laser postcards in your printer. We'll go ahead and run this report for the middle of July through the middle of August. Click OK. Now here are postcard reminders for July 22nd at 8 a.m. for Leash McKinney and July 22nd at 8 a.m. for Sades Thompson. These are just simple reminders that they're scheduled for an appointment and to please give us 48 hours notice if they're in need of changing the appointment. So at this point we would click print, print those out on our laser postcards, throw stamps on them and get them out in the mail. Another type of postcard you could send out as opposed to the email reminders is the recall reminder card. This is going to give you the same listing of patients if you choose that same date range from the recall list that we generated, but it's going to put it in postcard format. So you can see in the description it says reminder cards for unscheduled patients that are due for recall. To use this, we'll click preview report, select our date range, and you have the opportunity to choose an assigned provider if you'd like. We'll just go ahead and leave that blank so we get everybody. Click OK, and once again, we can use those same laser postcards and print out a different reminder and get those out in the mail. This is to remind you that it's time for your next dental exam. Please call us at your earliest convenience to schedule an appointment. You can also edit the wording that's on these postcards if you'd like to by editing the report. Let's go take a look at a couple of these other report options that we have in regards to recall. You can generate mailing labels for people that are unscheduled and that are due for recall. This would be useful if you already have postcards that say, please call us for an appointment. You'll simply put the 516 Avery labels into your printer instead of a laser postcard, and it'll give you your patient with their name and address. Then you can put those labels on each of your postcards, add a stamp to it, and get those out as well. Perhaps after you've sent multiple reminders and made several attempts to contact a patient, you may send a recall reminder letter. Again, this is pertaining to unscheduled patients that are due for recall. Down here at the bottom of your screen is a sample of what this letter may look like. Once again, if you'd like to, you can edit the wording on this report by clicking Edit Report and change this to suit your practice needs and preferences. The last two reports we haven't looked at are very similar to each other. You have a recall work list. Let's go ahead and look at the sample information here. It'll tell you the patient's name, their chart number, if they have a next scheduled appointment, when they were last eligible for recall, and when they last completed a recall appointment. It has their phone numbers, their birthday, and also the head of household. You can generate this report to print, and instead of sending postcards in the mail or an email reminder, you could simply pick up the phone and call these patients and speak to them directly. The other option is a recall work list with all phone numbers. This is the same listing we just looked at, except for it gives you their home number, their mobile number, and their work number. Once again, helping patients keep up with their recall is a vital part of your practice. You have several tools in Dentamax in order to do so if the preference is to send emails, postcards, or to simply pick up the phone and call your patients. Most important is that they end up on that recall list by setting their recall section in the bottom left corner of their patient information screen. If you have any further questions about recall, setting up the email reminders or postcards for that matter, please feel free to give Dentamax a call. Thank you.